What a histogram is, is, is a, it's a visual representation of some data. So here we have some data over here and it looks pretty painful. Everybody hates tables when they first glance at them. But, but the cool thing about a histogram is we're going to take this cluttery data and put it in a kind of a visual representation so you can glance at it quickly and understand it easily. And a histogram has to do with frequency, how often something's happening. So on the y-axis, you'll have frequency here. And over here on the x-axis, I just picked a random example, made it up. Height, these are ranges of height. And of course, I totally left it vague on purpose. It doesn't say height of what, right? I mean, it doesn't even have units. So it could be a height of giraffes if these were feet could be heights of a newt, you know, if it was like millimeters, I don't know. So we don't care so much about what this real life situation is so much as how to interpret these, uh, how often something occurs in a range, right? So looking at this range from 45 to 50, how many, you know, of our, again, back to our giraffes, whatever, how many were there in that range? We found five. So we're going to come up here, one, two, three, four, five, and draw a bar, right? At exactly, we, we found that we had five occurrences of a height in this range. Now for the second situation, <coughs> we have 51 to 55. How often did that happen? We see that it happened seven times. So we come up six, seven, it's gonna be about this high. You might be better at drawing than I am. Okay, the next one, 56 to, to 60, again, seven right here and already you're starting to see why this is better than looking at these values this is totally like you can walk by glance at a chart and quickly understand 61 to 65 you go up to 12 so 7 8 9 10 11 12 right about here and these aren't exact i'm just sketching these out and the last one from 67 to 70 you see there's 17 right so it's at the top all the way to the top okay now i personally think this looks better than this here. So we know <coughs> that, oh wow, obviously there's more sort of individuals in this height range than there are down here. And that's why histograms even were invented was to, to tell you the frequency of something happening. This could be GPA down here and how often do you find people within these, G, these ranges of GPA. And the key is these are not specific points, these are ranges. Now what's kind of weird about histograms is they'll quickly, somebody will ask you, hey, you know, good job building this histogram, but what is this skew? Is this data skewed right, skewed left, uh, or is there no skew at all? And I think skew is totally counterintuitive. You see, we basically have data that looks like this, right? So to graph it down here, your data would look like this. And when I first learned skew, I thought, hey, obviously it's skewed to the right. The data goes up to the right. That is not the case. That is not what skew means. This is actually, this picture here is actually left skewed. And I guess the best way to think of it is you have more data points skewed out. It's kind of strewn out here to the left than you do have over here. And so I think there kind of has two ways to look at it. One is to, you know, deeply understand this concept. And the other is to just, for now, memorize it and then it'll percolate over time and you'll really start to understand it. But first, let me just show you the different SKUs so you know um, what they look like and you can kind of process it later. Okay, and so here are the three different examples. Let's just call this A, B, and C. And again, you're gonna, you won't know what this picture looks like till you create a histogram. And then after your histogram is done, you'll kind of see the pattern, right? And again, let's look at A. What is this? Counterintuitively, this is actually left skewed more values are drawn out to the left here than the right what is this one here this one is actually drum roll drum roll this one is actually right skewed right kind of you have these values strewn out here and this is a classic zero skew this is not skewed at all because it's perfectly symmetrical kind of a bell curve this has no slant or skew one way or the other so I, again, I had to sort of memorize this before I understood it, and that's not a big deal. Go ahead and do that for now, and then over time you'll process it and get it a little more. So that's what histograms are for, analyzing data, uh, the frequencies of, of sort of uh, things happening within different ranges. And with that visual representation, you can quickly get your skew, which again is helpful. Uh, in the case of the drafts, are there more towards the taller end or the shorter end or what? And so that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed that video, and hopefully you aced this section.